let's check the light. I don't know why, but I like this one the most. <sighs> Let me grab my cup of coffee and we can start. Hello, hello! Welcome to Ivana's Noshk Life. I was promising myself that I'm gonna publish video every single week and I will work for it and so on, but life is life and sometimes we have to choose what is best for you. The last three weeks for me were extremely challenging and there is actually one, the only one reason why it was extremely challenging and I couldn't make any videos. I tried, but you know, the quality was it looks like I really have many wishes and want to do a lot of things at the same time, but I don't have enough physical capabilities. So last three weeks I had a huge headache almost every single day. Uh, pills were not helping. I managed to go to work and deliver uh, as it is my responsibility and this is the way how I earn money. Yes, I'm planning to go to the doctor and have a checkup because this is the first time in my life that actually in three weeks, about five days that I didn't have a headache, that actually affects your quality life quite a bit. And it's I never experienced like that. And today I feel much better. I don't have a headache. And I think it is my second day in a row that I don't have a headache. And actually I am able to do some talking with you. Because I was preparing for this video for the last months by just observing some stuff, looking at different places. And I hope that summary that I made today will be helpful for you. I don't know how many of you have watched my last video of 2022 where I was talking about recession and that in Norway probably it's also recession. There is not so many job opportunities and I wondered if it's only something specific about December or is it really a recession that is hitting Norway. And of course, when we entered in a new year uh, in January, the first thing that I started to check is how is the job market in Norway, specifically with the focus on IT. And I hope that today's video, today's update will give you some hints. I also observed changes of some of these tools, like how the algorithms work in some of these tools. I will share this with you and hopefully it will help you to understand, do you need to apply for job now in Norway? If there is a possibility about that and which websites are still good to do this in and which way. So let's start the vlog. Let's sit a, a bit in a comfortable way because we will have a bit of a discussion. And of course, the main discussion will be about job market in Norway and what to do. But I also want to start introducing something that is coming uh, to my channel. And it's interesting to see a discussion or like your thoughts on that. And it is related to the job market in Norway, education uh, in general, and just my way of doing some things that I think it's good to do. So with no further ado, let's sit more comfortably and talk a bit more. I'm not sure if I will be able to make videos every single week because I want to introduce a new uh, type of videos and it will be relevant to the uh, upgrading my technical skills that I'm missing quite a lot. This year in uh, my YouTube channel, I want to make something that can be both very useful for you and very useful for me. I've been working as a team lead for quite a bit now and my work is to help my team uh, mates, my colleagues, 
to become better, to find the ways how to help them to reach their career, to expand their knowledge, their skills. But it's quite easy to forget about yourself. What actually do you want to upgrade with yourself? How do you want to stay competent? What do you see for yourself in the future? And I uh, really miss some parts of the work that I've, or some parts of things that I've been doing when I was uh, in the university and I want to bring it back to my life. And then I had a question, how to bring back into my life uh, some technical projects that will be far away from the work, or like far enough from what I do at work. So it will not be very hard for me to focus on those projects. But at the same time to keep up with the YouTube channel and to make useful content for you. And then one of the ideas that I got in my head is actually I want to introduce a new uh, a new style of the videos. They will be much longer and probably it's gonna take a bit of time to create them. But I will identify some technical projects that I myself want to practice on with some skills that I actually don't have and I want to learn them, I want to acquire them. And I want to share this journey with you from a how do I start working with some project, some idea that I created, that I found in my head, actually not on the internet, how I came up with that idea. And uh, then I will uh, practice on different, so everything, I will have a videos about talking like how do I think everything that I'm taking into account, uh, executing different things, practicing. If I'm gonna struggle, just show that struggle that you are with me. Maybe some of you will want to join me, uh, maybe will want to go to my GitHub and start to be a part of that project, who knows? Or maybe some of you it will help also to show how actually can you plan for acquiring skills, how to do it when you have a full-time job and uh, maybe sometimes you are low in energy. So you need to find something that is very interesting for you, that you are mot still motivated. There is, uh, th this is a small introduction from me, just because I'm not sure, probably many of you will uh, decide to unfollow me and unsubscribe and that's fine. But for those who are interested, please write in the comments uh, which part or how detailed should I be in my videos? Do you really want to hear me thinking aloud? Uh, would it be interesting for you to have uh, many shorter videos or maybe one uh, longer that covers some specific topics. Uh, share your thoughts in the comments below in this video and let's go back to the original content of this video. Starting from the January, I started to open LinkedIn a lot, I started to check Fin.no a bit more. I didn't do that much research on the Now uh, website. Uh, and now it's, for those who doesn't know, it is an organization that is responsible for helping people to find a job when they lost one, or if the refugees come to country, they are responsible for helping them to socialize and uh, to find a job and to start actually having a normal life. And what I found, it was kind of interesting. So one of the observations that I see, it is a small change or like a small shift in the job market. I actually buy, I was extremely surprised to see a lot of positions opened in Norway almost on the second day of January. So yes, for those who are interested, IT market in Norway is now very good, a lot of positions are open and it's a huge opportunity for those who want to move to Norway. Please go and check, I will share again in the, in the description of this video links to the main websites that I recommend you to check. But <clears throat> but also what was interesting that <laughs> In the end of 2022, it was many more positions on data science. It was extremely many. And what I see now is a bit different situation. Many more companies started to search more for the data engineers. And at some point, it was like a bit uh, strange for me to see many data engineer roles. 
And I started to do some checks. And what I actually found that on the fin.no I was able to find data science roles open as well. I was able to find software engineers roles open as well. And not as many data engineers as LinkedIn was promoting to me. And then I actually understood what has happened. So it looks like uh, algorithm on the LinkedIn uh, website is a bit strange recently. So if, for instance, you are opening, and I know why Data Engineer was promoting to me, and in a minute I will explain, but for you to understand, LinkedIn is checking your profile. And then based on your profile, it also kind of weights the recommendations that is shown to you. So even if you are searching, for instance, for data engineer, data analyst, data scientist role, but your profile doesn't match that well with that, it actually LinkedIn can decide not to show you many of the positions that are open uh, and show you something that LinkedIn thinks is relevant to you. At the same time, uh, your uh, how you open positions will affect what LinkedIn is going to show you. And this is what happened to me. Uh, in Before the end of 2022, we were preparing for the opening positions at my company. And uh, I was one of the responsible for writing the description. So I started to check out on the LinkedIn different descriptions for such positions. And this messed up extremely with my uh, search ability on the LinkedIn. So LinkedIn decided that I'm interested in some specific positions that I was looking for. And before that, I was uh, searching for a bit of uh, positions that could be relevant for my cousin, just to understand what is happening in the market and so on. So in total, it may messed up. So LinkedIn started proposing me very strange recommendations. They at first they were not even a data engineer, they were not software engineer, and they were not data scientists. In some cases, I was receiving data analyst roles, but in so many, I don't know, probably because of my profile, I started to get many like management role, project manager role, uh, product uh, owners or product managers, but I. I was a bit like, but I'm my search is data scientist. I want to make a video on the data scientist uh, job. Why in the world don't I have in my first two pages none of the data scientist positions? I had a question, is it because there is no positions available or is there is something wrong with the algorithm or the way how it decides what to show me? So that's why I was checking a different website that was fin.no and then I saw that, yes, not so many, but there are still some positions on data science uh, role, data engineer, software engineer, front-end, back-end, but still the majority of the roles are in the software engineering. And then I started to be more careful with the LinkedIn and how I check out some positions and which keywords do I use for search and so on. So now I still can see many software engineers role. I started to see less data engineers role, but I started to see a bit of more data scientist roles. So this is for you who are searching for a job. Just uh, think about history of what you've been checking lately. And if you switched or you shift from software engineering to data science or from data science to data analyst, remember that you will need at least from my experience, I didn't do it every single day, but from time to time, it took about three weeks or something to start having this shift uh, in uh, what will be recommended to me. And if to look from, because I actually see 1000 uh, research responses, so it's quite a lot, but I cannot see very relevant to what I'm interested in, right? So in that case, um, it was useful to use multiple websites because it helped me to have an overview. But the main point is actually for those of you who are interested in coming to Norway, uh, there are many more positions open, so it's a good time for you to apply. Yes, many of those require Norwegian. Unfortunately, there are so many now data scientist roles that descriptions are in Norwegian and it is expected that you have <laughs> no Norwegian. Uh, some uh, consultancy as well, they do want Norwegian, 
but there are still possibilities of uh, what you want to do. And the interesting part is that when I was looking for the description of the data scientist role and comparing to the software engineer role, I was uh, slightly... It was quite uh, interesting to look at it. Uh, some time ago, I was actually asking you on the community uh, tab about, like, what do you think if there is any difference between data scientist and software engineer? And the interesting part is that in some cases, yes, it is, and in other cases, uh, not to complete extent. There are many more now data scientist positions that are not per data scientist. Quite often, uh, there is a need for data scientist that can do a slightly DevOps, or for data scientist uh, in DevOps, I mean, uh, setting pipelines, doing uh, Kubernetes, um, yeah, doing a bit of ETL work and so on. And at the same time, when I look on the uh, or like some interest in the backhand side, because for instance, making APIs, someone can argue that it's a software engineering uh, part of work, and uh, in many cases, it's actually data scientists who are also doing APIs, not only software engineers are doing APIs. In data scientists, typically in Norway, it is either master or PhD level, of course, if a degree, if you have a PhD, uh, most likely company will be interested in hiring you much more if you just uh, graduated from master in many cases, but also depends what is your direction in PhD, what is the direction of this master. So it's many what if. But at the same time, when I looked on the software engineer, of course, in majority of the cases, it's nice if you know, uh, if you have a computer science degree, um, and it requires much more knowledge on the algorithm side, on the data structures and so on. But in some cases for data scientists as well, knowing data structures and algorithms will uh, make you a much greater data scientist. Because from what I've seen as problems, sometimes domains do require a very creative way of solving problems. And to be creative, you need to have much wider uh, knowledge skill set. And maybe some of the domains are not that, um, I don't know, like, I have a Norwegian word for it for that, uh, it is um, that require a lot, but f those that are very complex and, and they require a lot of thinking and figuring out some very novel, interesting ideas, for those actually more you know, the better your ideas will be and quicker you will be able to move. So, going back to the conclusion, please apply now. It's a great time. It's a great opportunity for you. Don't miss it. Go for it. And I hope that you are interested in the possible uh, change of my content, because it doesn't mean that I will not cover topics that I were covering before, but it means that I will focus much more uh, on technical skills and how to acquire them without uh, putting any additional cost to that, how to do it for free at home. And maybe some of you will gain some knowledge by going through this process together. Thank you for watching until the end. I wish you all a good health, no headaches, and see you next time. Bye!